everyone today is the day of happiness for me i'm humbled that the my family services has recognized my journey and giving this opportunity to share my story i contacted my family services in end of march 2019 and it's been one year 11 months now i'm at the happiest point of my life right now but three years ago is when my lowest point began. I'm just sharing my experience to relate to everyone who is listening this, just to know if they're going through similar situations, it's not normal and it's not okay. And you don't have to live with it. Well, it's a story of a woman whose perfectly imperfect life made her who and what she is today. I belong to a very conservative Muslim family where good daughters never say no to their parents. My father wanted me to get married because I reached 25 years of age. All I said was, if that makes you happy, I will say yes. And of course, it was never a happy marriage as my ex-husband and in-laws holded baseless grudges in their hearts due to their greediness and difference of opinions and rushed over marriage and within 10 days he flew with me to USA. Because I was NRI born, his only agenda was to make green card processing quick. But I believed things will get better in USA but I was forced to live in a joint family system. In a blink of an eye, my life changed. I changed when I knew he couldn't perform naturally and our marriage never consummated. He passed months giving false hopes of getting a medical treatment. As he made his pride ego bigger than our marriage, he emotionally controlled my mind by forcibly keeping me busy in cooking for parties. To keep our sex life hidden, he intimidated and isolated me from going to friends and family. Every day I used to say to myself, today is the last day. He is not going to hit me and humiliate me again. But days turned into months and months took us closer to our first wedding anniversary. When I caught him cheating on me and openly bringing his filthy past in our present. I was on edge of despair. And by then our relationship became more stagnant. I had never been lonely any time in my life than I was in the marriage. I was scared all the time. I could clearly see that he was a worse husband with no mercy and full of revenge and hypocrisy. But family and the society around said all marriages are the same. Whenever I attempted to speak unapologetically what a woman want to make a marriage successful, he always threatened me and put hands on me asking to pack the bags and leave his house and call my parents to send tickets. He once challenged me he will tear my visa document to make me realize my dependency on him. As I chose to respect him with enough patience and chances, he got overconfident that I am not aware of my right of self-determination which made him explode his frustration and anger more and more with every day. By the time relation reaches the physical abuse stage, I have already crossed a long road of mental abuse, which has broken my confidence. I clearly remember how his repeated violent kicking and 
shaking to me onto a wooden floor, made me see all the unfair things very clearly, but I was kept ignoring and moving on with them. I sustained a lot of physical and mental injuries where my both wrist bones had bruises as he held it tightly to hit them back towards the wall. And my both elbows skin was peeled off. My left shoulder was jammed. He refused to send me with paramedics, but my health condition forced me to take 911 assistance. And later when he plead guilty of it, towards which I paid a high price of staying all alone for five months, managing my needs without any food and money assistance from him as a punishment because I didn't drop the domestic violence charges against him. Later, he made me homeless with a threatening notice to vacate in five days as gas, electricity and water will be cut off and cancel the house lease and also sent me a divorce notice. That day I was devastated. I was crying and cribbing for mercy, but no one had time. I remember asking my mother, why me? She said, this too shall pass. God has a bigger plan for you. Since then, I decided to overcome my fears one after the other. My biggest fear was divorce. I couldn't stand this word. I was trying to cling on to the person who didn't want me anymore. But I said, no, I had to make it work. And I realized it's nothing but my fear. I liberated myself by setting him free. Despite he trespassed my shelter home with fake reconciliations, bribing me alimony, only to make me attend the green card interview at USCIS. But I never looked back. I tried to hate the incident. I tried to forget it, but I couldn't. And I realized, how can I hate something which has transformed me into a best version of me? So I embraced it. I remember it was Friday at 4 p.m. when I called my family services and had detailed talk about my situation. The intake worker consoled me, my family services will take care of me. And I was amazed to see within one hour, I was assigned with a caseworker who courageously met me outside my house and gave me mental and emotional strength by providing immigration assistance. And I'm so happy I learned so much from her. She analyzed my independent growth and reviewed my case and provided food, clothing and furniture assistance. I'm highly obliged on receiving financial assistance towards my rental bills and cap transportations to my court hearings. Sometimes I wonder how easy it's for me to describe all this all over again. And somebody has rightly said that when you share your story and it doesn't make you cry, that means you have healed. And today I'm here speaking to all these amazing people because I have overcome the fear of acceptance. As I am not just a body and face, but I am a mind and a soul. And I want to celebrate who I am and want to live with dignity and pride. My journey towards a survivor has taught me real happiness lies in gratitude. And since I have stopped investing myself in wrong people, I am more me now, as I'm not a people's pleaser anymore. And now, while I make amazing plans about life, 
I still prepare myself for divorce because life is so unpredictable and I want to be prepared. When I was scared and all alone, my mother was very far from me and it wasn't possible for her to come here. But when I reached to my family services, I felt like I found a new mother in foreign land. My family services has been a helping hand and I'm glad I could come out of a dark hole. And I thank you so much for lifting me from darker days to brighter days. It has given me new hope. I can now dream. I'm blessed to have my family services who never left me when all other doors kept closing one by one due to pandemic. I always believed on the road to success, there is always we, not me. Last but not the least, the woman who made me realize that heroes have no genders. I am nothing without her, my mother, who inspired me to be patient and to always speak the truth. I don't know how my story will end. Maybe some stories just never end, but nowhere in my text, the world will ever read that I gave up. Thank you everyone for listening to me. I am an outsider. I built these beams with your dreams and watered my red velvet roses with your green garden hoses. I have learned your words, your rules, your pets' names, your silly games, and yet you ask me, so where are you from? And suddenly all I hear is, you're not from here. I'm an outsider in my own home. I am alone. I am the dirty magazines my son hides behind the kitchen counter, not meant for polite company. A homemaker, you ask me, but what do you do? What I do is build a home on the hope that my life will get better. That silly dream that still gives strength to my mother while that man hurls abuses at her. She couldn't save herself, but she could give me what they took away with her dowry. Freedom. She parceled me in a red wedding sari and wrote down the address on the package anywhere but here. But out here, away from there, it's the same. No, it's worse. Because out here, I am an outsider. I am a clothes line stretched between two worlds, neither here nor there. Too proud to hang my dirty laundry out to air. What right do I have to complain? Back home they have it worse, that patriarchal curse that forces women to be nothing more than a kitchen appliance and a purse. Out here I don't need to wear a veil to cover my head, just a high collar to hide the bruises. I'm better off than most, but worse than I've ever been. A small price to pay for piped gas and a chance to eat at the same table as the men to be seen. But I am still an outsider. The women here, they don't believe in second chances. No way. But neither do the men behind the desks believe in first-time applicants with no resume. What's the use of picking up the pieces of my life and walking away when I can never make these odds and ends meet? I am an outsider from my own body, from these bruised hands and feet. When the mehndi faded and the scars didn't, I learned to distance myself from my flesh, from my fear. Every time he abused me, I went away in my head, yet another anywhere but here. I bandaged my wrists in handcuffs of, I probably deserved it. I wrapped broken bones in tourniquets of, he will change. I concealed the scratches under an, I'm doing fine. 
I straightened my back with a brace made out of I will not break. I am an outsider when it comes to life. I will never ever consider anything as stupid as suicide. How can you kill yourself if you're already dead inside? I am an outsider. I always have been. But only until I let someone in. You are not alone. Let someone in. Someone like you. From every wound, there is a scar, and every scar tells a story, a story that says, I survived. Disclaimer. The story we are about to view is a fictional dramatization based on a true survivor story. To protect the identity of the survivor, the names have been changed. A few scenes might have some violence and the use of foul language in them. Parents' discretion is advised. They say, marriages are made in heaven. If this were true, then how could it ever end up in hell? My life began as any other ordinary girl's life. I had just finished my master's and dreamt of a happy life ahead. I wanted to start earning, look after my parents, fulfill my small little dreams. But life, life has its own plans. You may have dreamt it one way and it might take you on an entirely different path. One day, when I came back home, there was excitement all around. A marriage proposal for me had walked its way into my house. Oh, Meena, Mary Bachi, I'm so happy for you. Tumari to kismati chama gay. Kya bhetarin ishtaya hai? The boy stays in America. He has a very good job there. He'll keep you very happy. But Ma, I don't want to get married now. I wanted to apply for a job so that I could earn enough to do my PhD. But Beta, this is something you can do even after your marriage. America is a land of opportunities. With your husband's permission, you can study and earn over there. With my husband's permission? But Papa... Beta, listen to me. We know if we turn down this proposal, we may not get such a good match. And so, like any good daughter, I conceded. The so-called made-in-heaven marriage transpired. Soon after the marriage, 
We left for the U.S., land of dreams and opportunities, as my father had said. Little did we know that my nightmare was about to begin. First, everything looked good. There were conflicts, but being newly wed, we needed time to adjust. Or so I thought. Soon our conflicts started taking ugly shapes. My husband was a very tight-fisted man and never missed the opportunity of pointing out how extravagant I was. How did you finish all the groceries in just one month? Do you even know how hard I work to earn money in this country? Please calm down. I didn't waste anything. But I'll try to be more careful next time. I tried to be more and more careful. To the point where I started becoming a nervous wreck. But his yelling never stopped, no matter how hard I tried. As our fight frequency increased, there were many a times when he would throw me outside the house to shiver in the cold, dreary nights and wouldn't let me in, no matter how much I pleaded. My life was gradually withering out. When two months into the marriage, I became pregnant. For some time, life seemed to return to normal again. My husband was happy with me and so was I. But my happiness was short-lived. He started having issues with the amount of food I was eating. He was always irritated that I wasn't able to work around the house that much. Seven months into pregnancy, one day we had a terrible fight. Oh my God, what is this phone bill? Have you been calling India every single day? Suresh, you know I'm pregnant. And all alone in this situation. I called back to take my mom's advice on what I should be doing and not doing in these circumstances. Well, there's one thing you surely mustn't be doing, and that's spending all my hard-earned money on your phone calls. This is ridiculous. Calling India to figure out what you should and shouldn't be doing? And who is going to pay for all these exorbitant bills? Your father didn't leave me an empire to take care of his queenly daughter. Why are you saying all this about my father? Your father? Your father was too happy getting you married to me, getting rid of his burden and putting it on me. Smart guy, your dad. Don't drag my father into all this. Oh, don't drag him? He and your mother are already in the middle, yapping with their daughter all the time, and their daughter just sitting there, not doing anything, just wasting my money. Is there any work you do all day? Bathroom is so dirty, the living room looks like shit. All you do is eat, eat, Eat. Have you looked at yourself in the mirror lately? You look like an ugly sandbag. Why don't I just pick you up and dump you? And with that, he threw me on the floor. <laughs> the unthinkable happened. My child was no more. <laughs> but even then, the atrocities did not stop. In fact, now I was responsible for my child's death as well.
days turned into months, months into years. But things remained the same. I was now becoming used to the daily abuse and violence. The only colors that I had in my life were the red, blue and purple marks that kept increasing on my face. Eventually, I gave birth to a baby girl and later to my second one. Things still kept going downhill. In his eyes, now we were three more people he had to provide for. He forced me to apply for jobs even though I was on H4 visa. And when I didn't get the job because of my visa status, he took out his anger on me. One day, he came home and announced that he had a conference in Chicago. He asked me to pack my bags and said that he would drop me off at my brother's place there for a few days. I had sighed a bit of relief when he handed me $40 for my expenses. A few days actually turned out to be three long months before he returned to take me back. Once we were back. How have you been? It's been so long since I saw you. What took you so long? I'm a busy person, you see. I have to earn money to feed my extravagant family here. Speaking of which, where's the $40 I gave you? $40? Which one? The one you gave me before leaving me at my brother's house? They were spent in buying baby food and stuff. I was so embarrassed. I had to borrow money from my brother. What? You fucking bitch. You spent my hard-earned $40 just like that? You just know to turn my money to ashes. You know what? Let me show you firsthand how it feels like to burn to ashes. And with that, the finale was unveiled. He took my hand and burnt it. <coughs> what followed was not something that I had desired for, but was now inevitable. I was still dependent on him, but even as the cops arrested him, he refused to give me any money to look after my little kids. My world had shattered before my eyes, and there was nothing I could do about it. Then someone mentioned my family services. Finally, a ray of hope. I called my family services. Immediately, I was assigned a caseworker who came to meet me. I explained my sufferings to her. And she said, Hello, Meena. I'm so glad you called My Family Services where we understand your situation. Our entire team will guide and support you through these tough times. We will work together to ensure your safety and well-being. You are strong and capable and can have a better future. My life had seen a new dawn. My family services. Mm -hmm.